Hello, happy Monday. Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa and I am here today to stitch up the garden embroidery. So this is going to be our embroidery of the month for this month and uh, it's going to be fun to do. We're going to use two strands of thread because uh, it is a little thinner. Uh, we want to make the stitches a little bit thinner than we normally do because it's pretty detailed. Uh, but this is going to be fun. Uh, I'm excited to stitch this one up. So thanks again for joining me. Let's get going. All right. Hello, hello, everyone. Scooch on over. All right. So this is our new embroidery of the month. Uh, it is the garden embroidery. Uh, so here's the finished one. This is what it'll look like when we're all done here. And uh, let's get, let's open up our kit here. So the kit, this month you also get like a cute little greeting card with it too. <laughs> My little celebrate fall greeting card. So I'm excited to share that too. All right, come on out. There we are. I think I'm going to just use this for my project tray. I'm going to just close it up and uh, I'll stick all my extra floss and everything in there while I work. Okay, so it comes with a hoop. Uh, the things that I'm using that didn't come with it, I, I have a little scissors here and I got my little need needle minder out. We'll probably use that as well. Little ribbon to tie on after. Lots of fun colors in this one. And uh, here's my needle. Get that on the needle minder right away. My little uh, how-to booklet and then uh, we have our instructions. So here we are for this month. Uh, five different stitches we'll be doing. It's our little isometric uh, garden. So on the back cover, so this is the cover that I pulled out on the back is all the instructions. So one thing that we're gonna look at with this design is uh, there's a lot of things behind each other and in front of each other and uh, uh, it's going to be easier, I think, to do the things that are further back in space. Because uh, like for example, I think we'll start actually with this tree here. Uh, you see how the, f the fence here is in front of the tree. So like if we were looking at this in real life, the tree would be behind the fence. So I want to kind of stitch it in that same way as well. I want to stitch it with the fence kind of being in front of the tree, meaning I want to stitch the tree first and then the fence. Uh, we're going to do that again, like with this bench. I'm going to want to stitch the bench before like this tomato plant. Some of it we might, you know, just go here and there with like, but you know, again here, this berm or this uh, mound, we'll want to stitch that first, probably before the fence as well. Um, so anyway, we're going to be kind of paying attention to that as we go. We're going to be using two strands of floss here. Ooh, Robin got her package. Awesome. Uh, with the mystery gifts. Yay. <laughs> nice. I love putting those together, the little mystery gifts. So we'll do that again um, today. Uh, if you purchased uh, $20 or more in the shop, I will throw in a free mystery gift if you're watching live here. All right, so here's the design. It's pre-printed on the fabric and uh, I'm just gonna get it in the hoop right away. I'm not gonna iron it or anything. So I unscrewed the hoop and put the inner part of the hoop down first, kind of centering my fabric. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then putting the outer hoop on. So I'm going to just tighten it a little bit first so the fabric holds and then I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of pull on it. This will get like the little creases out a hair and just make it easier to stitch. Hey everyone on Facebook, I can read your comments today too. It's been hit or miss over there. All right, so I think it feels in here. There's no like weird like bubbles, like a really unstretched part. Oh, Renee, uh, in my profile, um, there is uh, the link there will have the embroidery of the month. And it's weird to get to the profile on TikTok. You have to click um, my name up there and then you have to click like the circle icon. 
<laughs> that so a thing will pop up and then you have to click my little circle icon and then the whole thing will go away but you'll still be able to hear me uh, and you'll be on my profile page and then you can click the the link that I put in the in the profile I know it's kind of a lot but in there um, there should be an embroidery of the month and you'll see the the um, the kit we also have it available as a PDF pattern and a fabric only one as well Oh, Caitlin, that's understandable. Caitlin says, I got my embroidery waiting, but the teachers went back today, so I'm entirely too exhausted to work on it tonight. That's funny. That's not funny. I feel sorry that you're exhausted, but yep, that'd be a reason for me not to embroider too. Oh, no problem, Renee. Yeah, thanks so much too. Uh, all right, we got our stuff ready here. Um, so I did mention earlier that it is two strands of floss. Uh, and the reason for that, and we'll just go over this quick. Um, <laughs> get my big old floss guide out here. So the different number of threads changes the thickness of your line. So I typically use three strands of thread, which is like right in the middle. Six strands is how much it comes with the, the floss. So floss is made up of six strands. So if I look at this and bop the top there, you can kind of see there's six, six little strands. These are made to be able to take apart relatively easily. So you can separate the six into different numbers of strands, which greatly affects the thickness. So like this floss up here is six strands and the thickness guide is one strand. I'm going to be using two strands for this piece. I usually use three, which is right in the middle, but this is a little bit more detailed and delicate. So I want a little lighter lines. Um, so I'm going to do thinner lines. So I'm going to do the two strands. But with two strands, we, always, we also get the fun benefit of being able to do the loop method of starting. And that's what I'm going to show you guys tonight. So this is not how I always do this, but it only works if you use an even amount of strands. Um, so that's, that's why we'll do it. Um, we get the benefit of being able to do that since we're using two strands. So I'm going to start with this tree, I think. Uh, we'll do the stems of maybe these, both of these trees. Um, and then we'll save the rest of my brown. Oh, that's going to be tough. Well, it'll work. Um, we'll do the loop method to start, but anytime we switch to another place, we won't be able to do the loop method anymore, but that's okay. I can show both methods then. Um, uh, for, for the loop method though, we need double the amount of thread. So usually I go about 18 to 24 inches. Another way to measure is to kind of go to your, the pit of your elbow there. Um, I kind of tack on another inch or so. And then I'm, that's usually where I cut. But since I'm doing the loop method, I'm gonna double it up. So there we are. And then we will cut here. All right, I am only going to pull one strand from here because we're going to double that up to make the two. So I just bop the top of my strands here that kind of separates that all up. And um, so I can kind of isolate just one. And there we go. I'm, I isolated the one. You can see it bunch behind me there. I'm just going to pull and that will all bunch up like it's crazy. And then the moment, <laughs> the moment the thread comes out, it'll all kind of relax. And I just run my hand through that again. So that's how I get strands out of the floss. Um, now I don't need the rest of this for now. There's a lot of brown in this piece, but I'm going to set that aside. And now we, oh my God, I can't pick it up. There we go. <laughs> we have our long strand. I'm going to bring the ends together. And you can snip those um, to have them nice and perfect if you want. Let's just do that. It's a little curly on the end here. That'll be tough to thread there. That's going to be easier to thread. Get my needle. And I'm threading the ends. All right. So now I should have uh, the two ends threaded through the needle. And then I should have like this, the fold on the other side there. Uh, that's that's our starting position. Ooh, thank you. I did my nails last night. Uh, I did them a little earlier than uh, in the time period of me doing nails. Like, I try and wait between two and three weeks to switch them. But, yeah, 
I'm probably not going to be here this weekend, and it was looking pretty, pretty bad, so we changed it up. Oh, are you guys not getting sound? Uh, Christy says no sound on, um, on Facebook. Huh, it seems to be working on my end. Hold on, let me just check really quick. Yeah, it should be working. So, Christy, maybe go out and come back. I think... I think other people might be able to hear me. So, all right. I'm going to do this line first. That's uh, this bit right here. And uh, all of the lines are back stitches. So back stitch for the lines, French knots for the dots. Oh, just a little seed stitch for all the little grass blades. All these little blades can be just like one stitch. Um, satin stitch for the filled in shapes. Oh, and then single chain stitches for all the like leafy bits. So, all right. Oh, for me, I keep buffering too, Rory. Huh. Oh, Venus says, um, it's a good stream for me. Okay. So hopefully, hopefully it'll work itself out. Okay. And Nora says I have sound. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to assume we're okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna start the loop method and we will backstitch and get these branches here. So for a backstitch, uh, you know, my real starting point is the bottom of this tree, but for a backstitch, I actually wanna start one stitch away from the starting point. So I'm gonna do that. And I'm not gonna pull through all the way. I, I got my, my little um, fold at the end there. I'm gonna leave that and I'm gonna go back back towards the beginning. So back stitch, you start a stitch up and you go backwards towards the beginning. So I'm going to pull that until that point, but then now here's the loop method. I'm going to keep pulling and then right at the end here, that's where a fold of our thread is. I'm going to stick the needle inside that loop that's kind of formed and now I can pull that tight. And we are completely secured without any, wasting any thread and uh, um, without a knot, uh, it's like a perfect little start. <laughs> and you can only do that with an even amount of strands because you do need that fold. Um, and then uh, it needs to be like on fresh floss. Like if I stitch this stem and then I cut this I, and I want to use this floss still, you know, it's got a cut at the bottom. It doesn't have the fold. So I'll have to do a different method then unless I fold it up, you know, even smaller. But there we go. That's the loop method. And now we can keep going. And uh, we're just going to continue the back stitch. So uh, going up another stitch. I'm not going to worry about this fence here yet. Because uh, like I said earlier, those stitches, I'm going to just on purpose go in front of the line that I'm stitching now. So I'm going to just continue up this line as if this line doesn't exist. And I'm actually going to try and not like go up through the same point. I'm going to try and have them like cross in a little different spot. So coming up one stitch away and then going backwards to the last stitch. Again, I'm going right in that exact same hole. There we go. And let's pull that through. So that's our second back stitch. Third, go up another and then back right in the exact same hole there. And we are gonna just keep doing that up this branch. I think I might get the other branches as I go. Well, we'll see. And the this can be printed a little light. Um, hopefully you guys can see it okay. Um, I think it's nice. It'll f it'll fade a little bit after uh, after it's been around for a little too, um, and then you won't see the stitches or the lines so much later but we're playing around with some other fabrics too that you might be able to see it a little bit more, but so far I think it's fine. Uh, but my point is you do have uh, your piece here for reference. So I'm always looking at this for like what stitches to do and what color and all that. Uh oh, all right. I felt a little knot happen back there. <laughs> oh, if they pulled out right away. Oh, that's good. I was going to show you how I typically get oh, those knots out, but it just came out on its, on its own. So if I get another like twisty loopy knot, I'll, I'll show you how to get rid of those. All right, so I'm just veering up this branch. There we go. And then I'm going to cut. 
come back and actually maybe let's let's do this other branch right away and then we'll get back on our main stem again. So I think three little stitches are doing it. Oh gosh, I feel like I got another knot. Oh look, okay, so here we go. I don't know why it's getting all twisty. Maybe because I folded it in half funny, but all right, so uh, this kind of happens pretty often in embroidery. You might get like a really kind of loopy knot. This has like a double loop, so hopefully this works. Um, but the way that I usually get rid of these loops is I'll stick my needle right in the loop and I'll kind of pull up and I'll set it down. And what I'll do is there's like two strands coming out of the knot, right? There's the one from the stitch before and then like the next stitch. I try and pull on one of those and one, pulling on one will bring the knot, oh, there we go. So I'm pulling on the right one. One will make it the knot tighter, which you don't want. The other will bring the knot right up to the needle. So there, the, the knot's right on the needle now. So then I can bring the needle out and then I just stick my uh, needle in, in that space and then pull. There we go, and that knot should pop right out. It's just like a little slip knot. Um, so. Loopy knots, that is, that is how I get rid of those pretty quickly. It doesn't work all the time, like if it's a crazy mess or like like several little loops get caught in the twist, then, then you gotta dig around in there a little bit more, but in general, that's, that usually works. All right, I'm gonna just jump down to get this little branch, little one hiding here, and then we'll get back to the main branch. This is gonna be a fun one. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for this. And I do like stitching with the two stitch, stitches or the two threads. It does just make things look just a little bit more delicate, I feel like. A little thinner lines. I like it. Wanda says I like doing the loop method. Yeah, it's just like a magic trick, I feel like. All right, there's a couple other little branches hiding in here. There's like one stitch worth up here. There we go, let's get that. And then, I don't know, this other one here, I think maybe we'll get it in two stitches. Could have probably done one, but this one down here I did in two, so we'll do this one in two. Okay, so that is our first little bit. I do have a bunch of floss on here yet, so I can still use this. Um, I don't necessarily wanna jump over to this other tree to do it though, because you can see, if I should hold this up to the light, you can see that thread, like from here to here, kind of jump from one tree to the other. And I don't know if I really wanna see that on the back. So that'd be the easiest way to do it is just to jump right over. But if you want a, a little bit cleaner piece, uh, you can do this instead. So I'm going to I'm gonna start fresh. So I'm going to weave in the end. I like weaving in the ends versus tying a knot, but we are going to cut this off. So I'm just weaving uh, back and forth in the backs of some stitches that are now available. Backs of the stitches. And I go three times always. That kind of locks it in. And I can snip. I can snip that right up close to uh, the, the stitches. So there's no knots, there's nothing for anything to get caught on and it's still pretty nice and clean. Hey Alicia. Oh, I think I did that wrong again. Is it Alicia or uh, Alicia? Um, oh, do you do, oh, Sibran, do you do? Oh, I missed, I missed some of the comments, hold on. Oh, I do not use instructions. Oh, to do this kind of embroidery. Oh, do you just, um, oh, that's a good question. So then are you filling it in or, I mean, you don't really need instructions. That's what's so nice about embroidery is that you get like a base of like line art and then you can really do whatever you, you want with them. You can like fill it in, you can change up the colors to whatever you want. 
Um, you could add like a bunch of stitches around and have like the main area and more silhouettes or, you know, there, you can just do so much. Like, I, I feel like it's, uh, we say sometimes that it's like a coloring book. You can really do, you know, whatever you want with it. So yeah, I'd love to see, see what you do with it. Oh, thank you, Jamie. All right. So I have a little bit of thread left. Probably close to enough for this other branch, but I can't do the loop method anymore because I have a cut end. So we are going to do the away knot method. I think we'll have enough thread. We'll see. It's kind of low, but let's tie another, let's tie a knot at the end now. And to do that, I'm doing a quilter's knot. That's where I hold the end in one hand, the needle in the other. I kind of cross them over and hold it with one hand. And then I can loop around the needle a couple times. I'm going to grab those loops with the other hand and pull the needle through. I could have probably pulled the needle through with this hand, but I don't know. This is more comfortable. So then the knot goes right where you want it. And I think I pulled out the threads. I did. So I got to rethread it. I'm going to snip them so they're even again. Boop. Figured this color is kind of matches the tomatoes <laughs> in, in this a little bit. So I thought it was a good color for the week. All right, so I got a knot on the end here, but I still want to weave in the backs of my stitches like I did here, but I don't have any stitches to weave into the backs of yet. So I'm going to just go from the front uh, about three inches or so away from my starting point. And I'm going to pull to the front and now I'm going to start my back stitch. And this will make sense in a moment here. What I'm doing is reserving a piece of floss to uh, weave in later. That's kind of a small little piece that I left. So hopefully that's enough to weave, weave in my ends, but we'll see. This is also the, the length that I always start to on accident, um, keep pulling the needle off the thread, but oh well, we'll see how we do. And you know what? I'm not sure we have enough thread here, but it's always nice to use it up. I'm getting these side branches again. I think, I think three stitches will do it. So we'll be working on this uh, all week here. And uh, um, I don't know if I'll be here Friday, though. If I am, it'll be on location at my parents' house. Um, we're, we're driving up there on Friday, but I don't know if I'll be here. So this might just be a Monday through Thursday thing this week. Uh, but I'll come back, you know, on Monday. If we don't have it done, I'll pick it up then. Because this one actually might take longer than, than the week anyway. Uh, Ovinus is asking, how long do I think this piece will take to finish hand embroidering? Uh, I suspect we will be able to get done with it in uh, six to seven hours. That is totally an estimate um, of us doing it here. So I'm, I'm on for an hour every evening. And uh, I think this will probably take seven evenings to do. Uh, typically, my, my designs take only, like, five. I call them, like, two movie projects. Um, but this one has a lot more detail, so this one might take a hair longer. So my guess, if I had a guess, <laughs> uh, if Jenna comes on, she stitched she stitched my um, the original one, the sample one, and she might have a better estimate. But my guess is about seven hours or so. You know, depending on, on skill level and stuff, too, and what else is happening while you're stitching. All right, I'm out of floss, so I'm going to flip this around. I think I have just enough to weave in my end. Ooh, I might only be able to weave this in twice. And I actually don't think I can turn the needle around again, so I'm going to actually weave in with the eye of the needle. That will do the job. I'm going to have so many other stitches back here, though, later with all the leaves that I think all those stitches will hold in this stitch. I, I usually like to go with it back and forth three times, but because that, that last one kind of secures it, but we didn't make it this time. 
Um, all right, so here's my away knot. We're coming back to that. I am going to snip that away. So that little knot's garbage. But that also releases our little bit of thread that we reserved on the back here. So I'm going to thread that and weave that in as well. This one we might not be able to go two times as like the first one, but oh well. Hey Jennifer! We just started the embroidery of the month, the garden, garden embroidery. All right, so this one I'm gonna have to go needle, or the eye of the needle first too, to get that last pass. But there we go. Snip. All right, first little bit of thread done there. It's looking cute. Um, all right, so I need more floss. So let's, this is our, our long piece that we, um, that again is double the length we need it to be because uh, we're doing the loop method of starting. So I'm gonna bop on the end again. Let's isolate our single strand and then we can pull it right on out again. Boop. And then I just run my hand through there and that just preps it for the next, next time we do that. All right, we're gonna do the loop method of starting again. So let's get both ends of this long piece matched up. And we have the ends on this side and then this side is the fold. And we're gonna thread these ends again. I'm gonna snip them so they're easier to thread. Grab a little needle. I like doing that pinch method. So the pinch method again is where I kind of pull my threads into my fingers and I can make this pinch motion and uh, I will unpinch slowly. And the moment I see my little thread there, I will lay the eye of the needle on top and just kind of push down through. And then if I hold it against my finger, I can see that other, the strands starting to come through. I can just grab those and pull. So that's my little pinch method of Threading, I'll, I'll do it again at like normal speed. It's kind of pulled on down, unpinch. Well, when I see it, I squish it on through and grab it. All right, so again, we got the those two ends threaded through the eye and then this end has our loop. Uh, we can do the loop method again to start. So here's our next back stitch. I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna pull up through all the way. I'm gonna go down right away and then flip it over, pull. Here's that fold of the thread. I'm gonna stick my needle through that little loop and then pull. And again, there's our starting point. No knots, no nothing. So nice. And then we can just keep going. That is like the most fun way to start, <laughs> start a piece of thread. So again, it only works if you use an even number of strands and it only works like on the first, the first time you, you, you know, where you can get that fold. That's why on the second tree, I couldn't, couldn't use that method because I had already cut the fold off or we already used the fold. All right, I got one little guy hiding up here. And then I think like two stitches here. And I think that's where we'll stop with the brown. I think, um, well, actually this, this, this is brown here too. Let's get that, let's get that um, little treehouse stem first. We'll kind of focus on this back area. Everything that's behind this first fence we'll, we'll do first. So, um, okay. I did finish that, didn't I? Yeah. All right, let's weave in the ends to the backs of the stitches to finish it up. And we'll, we'll do that away knot again, just to do those couple of stitches for the birdhouse. Actually, I'll do my like, do the like cheater away knot way. Oh, Caitlin says she got, oh, a chunky boy, a crochet hook um, holder 
Oh, and you love it so much. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, you picked up the other two sides, so you have a full set. Oh, nice. I think I have it. Oh, yeah, I still have it. It's right behind me. <laughs> the little chunky boy for, for the crochet hook. I haven't actually taken this crochet hook out. It is tough to get them out. And someone has suggested cutting a, uh, um, like, slicing it open, <laughs> which I'm sure, you know, that's crazy sounding, but I'm thinking I might actually try and with an exacto knife cut it open because then I can like open it up and close it uh, to get the needle in. I think that'll be actually a little bit easier. And if I do it in a spot where I'm never going to like have my hand held, uh, it's just going to be nice, I think. <laughs> so anyway, um, planning on giving that a try. That's why I haven't taken the needle, the needle out of there yet. Did I weave this in three times already? I don't remember. Let's go one more time. I don't even know which way I was weaving it. All right, let's I think I got it. That's awesome that you like it though. I gotta, I wanna, I wanna do that slice to give that a try. And if it doesn't work, I'll totally just get another one, but I don't know why it won't work. Um, but yeah, then I want to use it on, on the doilies that I'm working on. All right, so this is the last piece I want to stitch right here. I'm going to do that like lazy away knot. So I'm actually gonna just, oh, actually I'm gonna start from the front, but I'm gonna leave like a stitch worth uh, to do here. And I'm actually gonna just let this dangle out about the length that I'll need for a stitch and weaving it in. So I'm gonna just hold this here. I, don't, I only do this when I don't have that much to stitch. So now I'm gonna just go ahead and stitch up the little um, stake here, I suppose birdhouse steak. Oh, thanks, Jensers. We will be working on this all week. If anyone's new here, I'm here at 8.30 p.m. Central Time uh, for about an hour, uh, Monday through Friday, and we do various craft shenanigans. A lot of embroidery this year. Um, this week is our embroidery of the month. We kind of split up, split up what we do by weeks. Next week's our free week though, so we'll get to play around, do some sewing maybe. All right, so I wove in the end. Let's snip that. Still have a bunch left, so I'm gonna save that for later. But we're gonna switch colors. And now I got this little piece hanging out there. Let's just thread that. Oops, I missed. Okay, and I'm gonna finish that first stitch that we kind of left. There we go, and now I'm gonna weave that in too. Oh, that's awesome, Blue Moon. I'll have to check out your stuff. Um, you love fiber art in general? Yes, everything fiber art for sure. Like, I just wanna do everything. <laughs> and what I love, um, I've been doing these lives like for ages, for like actually like over six years, almost daily. Um, but I love trying out different things too. Uh, so every once in a while, someone will ask, oh, have you tried this or that? And then we'll, we'll give it a go. So if, you, if you're curious about any particular crafts that you haven't tried yet, let me know and it might pop up here at some point. Uh, Gina is asking, is this patterned after your garden? <laughs> no, but it would be nice if it was. I actually, I suppose, we do have two garden beds, or like, you know, they're not as, like, this is like the ideal <laughs> little world. Uh, no, ours does not look like this. It's actually probably about these proportions, though, uh, this size. But our actual garden has a little bit bigger bed that is totally horrible. Um, it's just like, not like clean and pretty. It, we really kind of clobbered it together. Um, but we have some kale growing and a whole pile of weeds, some lavender, and we had some garlic in it this year. Over here we have some raspberries, and then we have another box that goes like the whole way here that's filled with weeds and tomatoes. <laughs> and then it, then we have like some like just like plastic bins that we put out there that has some lettuce that's just keeping on coming up every year. So that's awesome. Uh, that's our favorite thing. And then this whole area is just mud. <laughs> we have planted, um, we've, we've planted 
squashes and that sort of thing in prior years in that area. That's why we left the space all all wide and open. But we, the squirrels just eat them. The squirrels and chipmunks. We've gotten um, the the um, rabbits to not come in anymore because we built a fence high enough. Um, it's just chicken wire that's kind of folded over on itself. But still. Ah, but those squirrels eat all of our zucchini and all of everything. Ooh, not much here, but I post on Insta. I crochet a lot. Ooh, Blue Moon. I'll, is it Blue Moon? Are you Blue Moon on, on Insta as well? Let me know. Ooh, add, uh, me too, but add diamond painting to the list. So that's been mentioned a lot lately to me. I should give that a try. I feel like it's be a lot like cross stitch, which is something we're going to hopefully do here soon. Um, but I'd love to give that a try. I was actually on watching like Twitch this morning, just paging through the craft shows on Twitch. And there was a few people doing the diamond, di diamond painting. All right. I got my double length of, of green. I'm going to do, I'm going to do these leaves next, I think. So let's grab our single strand. All right, I'm using I'm using the the box as my little my little uh, tray for floss and stuff. I'll put the used ones, the um, full skeins up here yet, and then the ones we've pulled will go on this side. Oh, did I get the thread bobbin things, Gretchen? I did. I know I've been just buying from all these creators on TikTok. Uh, First the the chunky boy now the the things they're they're behind me I'll show you them in a sec let's thread this ooh and you guys I made some bias tape last night or not last night yesterday and I did it that continuous um, method where you do we talked about it a little bit where you cut a fat quarter and have those two triangles that you rearrange and you magically can get like a whole like feet upon feet of um, bias tape. I did make the, that. It's on the same hook as these. That's why I grabbed it. But I did make those this this weekend. I have to use it yet. But yeah, so these guys came. These are the thread drips. Wait, drops. <laughs> thread drops. I'm like, wait, that didn't sound right. So these are the thread drops from Adam Hart cross stitch. And I love them so much. I did a video. I recorded. I haven't, I haven't um, posted it yet. But uh, so a thread drop is where you can hang the thread, like you can pre-cut your thread and put it on like a little loop on some of the little bits. Uh, these ones, ha this one just happens to be in the shape of a bobbin, which is cool because then I can wind the thread on, on too. Uh, but in the little, all the other holes you can store excess floss too. But yeah, they're so sparkly and fun. Aren't they neat? I just think they're so pretty. <laughs> so uh, I clean those up and... I've been playing around with those. I did some videos that I'll be posting soon. All right, let's see. We got our thread threaded. We got our fold on this side. Let's, let's, um, what I'm going to do is the loop method, but I'm actually going to loop it right in stitches that already exist. So I'm going to just go underneath some stitches there and now loop my needle or pull my needle through that fold that loop and there we've just kind of held it onto the backs of those stitches there and that's how I'm gonna start um, on these on these lazy day or on these single chain stitches the single chain stitches don't work as well with the loop method because you have to go in and out of the same hole and uh, so if you, even if you do that through a loop you can just like pull it right out so that's why I like looping it around a stitch that already exists Oh, Jensers, that's a fabulous compliment. That's that's just the right people I want here. That's funny. Oh, Ryla Joe, let me get write that down actually. Um, pencil. Got my little notepad here. Uh, I am very much jumped into the whole crochet realm again as of late here i'll show you how to do this single chain stitch so here first so i've come up on the uh like the pointy bit of one of these teardrop shapes 
and I am going to make a loop shape around that teardrop. So like in the same motion or in the same like direction. And then I'm going to go down back in that exact same hole. Oh, your Insta is Hook Sisters. Okay. Hook sis Sisters. I will check out both of them for sure. All right. I wrote it down. All right, and I'm going to go in a little bit, but not not far with the needle. Like, I'm only, I'm only about this far down. And then I'm going to come up at, like, the apex, the biggest part of that teardrop shape. And I'm going to come up in, like, this circle that we've created here. And now I can pull all the way through. But my thread, since it's in the middle of this cir circle, it's going to stop, stop it from pulling all the way through. And I'm not going to pull very tight. Uh, if I keep it kind of loose, it makes more of a teardrop shape. And we gotta, we gotta tack down that loop somehow though. So I'm gonna just go right on the other side of that loop and make the teeniest little stitch to tack it down. So we've done like a tiny little um, tack anchor stitch there. And uh, we're just gonna do a whole pile more of those. So I was like kind of looping around. I always kind of like holding it with my thumb. So the piece that's coming out of the fabric is, has like tension to it because like now when I pull in like this way, it's going to want to come through, but not if I hold it there. So I'm going to come up through my circle. There we are. And tack it down. All right, let's do a pile more of these. Caitlin, I know it's the worst. Caitlin says my bank account might have just yelled at, at you for showing more cute stuff. I know it's so bad. That's like, sometimes when I see that stuff, I'm like, God dang it, TikTok. Now I got to get those. They're just too cute or too helpful, you know, helpful gadgets and craft land. They're just so fun. What I love about most textile crafts and like fabric crafts is you actually don't need any of those things. <laughs> I, I think I say this a lot when we do quilt stuff, but you don't actually need any of these gadgets. Like if you have some thread and fabric or, you know, a thing of yarn and a crochet hook or whatever, you can, you can do all of it. But dang, some of those cute things just make you happy when you use them. And, you know, and like with the, with the chunky boy, like you can stitch for longer because it's like less pressure on your hand and it's just fun and silly. And uh, all those craft people making those neat products is getting me. And the, uh, if you, if you, if anyone goes to uh, Adam Hart Cross Stitches page, I think they're, they're on TikTok. Uh, they're on Instagram and, and everywhere too, but I think it is just Adam, like, you know, like science, A-T-O-M, uh, Hart, Adam Hart Cross Stitch. I think that's the website and that's also the, the TikTok handle, I think. But there's so many other shapes of these, like they come in hearts and and other shapes that still will fit in a bobbin case. So I don't know, they're clever and fun. And these ones happen to be sparkly, clear and pink sparkles. Uh, and there's just like tons of other ones as well. So check them out, making cute stuffs. All oh, those cute things. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's already 914. I must've been yammering. Uh, <laughs> yammering this whole time. So yeah, I think this will take us into next week for sure. Cause, um, this is a more detailed piece. And if I keep yammering, like I do, it's going to take us longer too. <laughs> oh, funny. But I want to get, let's get all these leaves in today though. I think that'll be nice. I'm really kind of excited to do this bench with the the um, vines growing on it. So I kind of want to get to that tomorrow. Oh, 
oh, Sheila. Sheila says, the design is so sweet. It reminds me of the book, The Secret Garden. I hope this design isn't too advanced for me. Oh, I'm a true beginner. Uh, it's not advanced. So we, we do have it as like a two dot instead of just like a single dot level. Uh, but that really honestly is just because there's more going on. It's not because the stitches are any harder. Uh, you know, it's not harder to stitch with two strands versus three. It's the literal only reason we, we have it is because it is a little bit more detailed. And, you know, and what I was talking about earlier about the thinking of like, what do we stitch first and second? Uh, so um, I'll just talk about that again. So I'm stitching the things that are like furthest back. Um, so like, uh, like the farthest away, like if you imagine this scene in real life, these trees would be behind the fence, right? So the tree would be here, the fence would be here. So I want to mimic that to, you know, as much as I can while I stitch. Um, and I'll show you why. So like, that's why I'm stitching the trees first and I'll stitch the fence on top of it after. And the reason is like, here's the finished piece and we'll look really close. Uh, you can see the the stitches for the here's a good good version of it so the stitches for the fence are actually physically in front of these stitches so you can see we've actually covered up um you know the tree with this next stitch that's far more easier to do if you stitch the t the tree first and then stitch uh, the back stitches of this fence over the top of it. You can tuck your needle. If, if I would have done this fence first, I could tuck my needle underneath the fence and then finish my stitches. And we will have to do some of that, you know, here and there through this piece. But uh, the easiest way is to just like kind of stitch those things that are furthest back first, um, if you can. But that is not the end of the world either if you don't do that. Like I said, I would just like tuck my stitch underneath the, the fence. Uh, but it, it's just an extra thing to think about with this particular piece, like what's in front of another thing and, you know, do I, like if I, I don't really want the tree crossing over the fence because then the fence will look like it's back here. So that's, that's literally it, why, why we put like a, a two dot level versus a one dot level. But it's not because of stitches, it's because that extra little bit of thinking of, you know, what goes in front of what. And uh, just that the, it's, there's a lot, like it's a high dense, um, lots of lots of stitches, a dense piece compared to some of our other ones. But Sheila will also be stitching it for a while here. So there's plenty of time to, you know, even as a beginner to not get behind. because I'm, I'm only working on it an hour each evening here. Hey, Kate and Heck Cassie. Oh, Jen's always yammering and showing off your cute things. Oh, and advertising for others. Yeah, I don't, I don't like, I'm not like an affiliate or anything of those other places. I just like fun stuff, fun crafty things, and then they both got me. <laughs> oh, I guess I didn't say where the other place is from. I think, um, yeah, so for the, for the, uh, the floss drops, or the, I always call them floss bobbins, but like these ones just happen to be shaped like a bobbin, uh, but really the floss drop could be anything that has like a hole just to hold the, the thread like this. I've never really used thread like this um, before, but I, I think it's pretty common for cross stitch. Um, it comes with the, the ring and everything. So that's Adam Hart cross stitch. And then the, uh, the, crochet hook handle has my little teeny one. They come in different sizes, so you can put like bigger crochet hooks in them too. This is Chunky Boy. <coughs> um, oh, I think, I think it's Chunky Boy Crafts maybe. Uh, if you do a search for Chunky Boy um, on, on TikTok, it'll come up. Or it's like Chunky, Chunky Boy Crochet, that'll get you there. So, uh, but they sell, they have a website too. I think both of both places though are one of these things where you want to get on the newsletter or follow them wherever to be like oh my drops happening on we have new designs happening on you know 
Friday at, at 2 p.m. or whatever, you know, because it's one of those things where they they sell out pretty quickly. Both I was able to get both of both those things from those vendors though without going to one of those drops, but you know the, the just the choices are more limited then. Like I didn't get a like you know. Like, oh, I really want that neon green chunky boy, but they're all sold out. Like, I just picked from what was there. But if you really want, like, a specific color that's coming out, then then I think it's more of a be there right when they are released sort of thing. Because I think both of them uh, have been getting the word out on TikTok and places really well. All right, I think that's my last stitch for this green. Uh, um, it's actually, it gets annoying to stitch uh, these single chain stitches when you don't have, don't have a pile of floss. Oh, Blue Moon, I would give it a try. So they're, they're $15 last I, last I um, checked. I, I got two, I got one for my really small, um, my really small, um, like steel crochet hooks and then I got the medium size one for like I don't know I don't know what size I was doing that like that I did that crocheted blanket with I don't know not huge uh but I get so I got the medium size um but my hand was very much cramping up I, I made a baby blanket recently um that I crocheted and uh, it was very much cramping up like after about 10 minutes of crocheting because I hadn't I hadn't crocheted in a while and I took on like a big project and I'm like god dang it so I'm like eh I'll try out one of these chunky boys I got one and I was able to crochet for like like um six hours <laughs> without any of that same tension um I do think the trick is and uh, and uh Caitlin can Caitlin can let me know if if she agrees with me because she got has one too I think the trick is to really let it just rest in your hand and it just like kind of roll. It's not to really grip it. Um, Cause then you're still making like your, your hands aren't so close together. Like that, that pinch motion or like this, this like close together, that's kind of what makes it ache. So if you just let it rest in your hand and you can just kind of like roll, roll it a little bit for your stitches, I found that. And you don't even need your thumb there. Like I can just do it like with these fingers that the just like resting. Um, I feel like that's what felt the best with it. It took a little while to, cause it's, you know, it's a, it's big and it's just like, man, this is weird. But like after, after I figured out, oh, I'm just going to let it rest like that. Then, then it worked great. All right, let's get another thread here. <laughs> but yeah, so that's, I think really Blue Moon, why, why they created it. Oh, Kate and Cassie says I'm gonna get my grandma one of those handles, and they're they're fifteen dollars. I do remember that because I was kind of, in my mind, that was cheap. So I don't know if that's cheap for anyone else, but like, it seemed like for a specialty sort of de like device, really like that. I thought it'd be and handmade and, and all that. I thought it'd be more expensive. Um, so anyway, I don't feel okay. So the one thing though I will have to say is that it is really hard to get the 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 crochet hooks out. I don't know. Some other people seem to think that like have figured it out, but I haven't figured it out yet. But one person in, in a comment said that they cut, um, cut it open, uh, just like cut a slit down it and then they can kind of open it and shut it that way. And I'm like, Ooh, I'm going to do that. So I'm, I have, I, this is from a long time ago. I, I haven't taken it out yet just cause I want to test it. I think it'll be easier to cut with it in. I don't know if that's a good idea, but I figure, eh, $15, it's not going to be the end of the world. And uh, even if I mutilate it a little bit, uh, it'll still be good. But I do notice that I do hold it a certain way because it's got a little flatness. Um, so I, I don't actually ever touch right here. So that's where I think I'm going to do the cut. I'm hoping to do that maybe this week yet. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, and Caitlin says, definitely just let the weight um, that controls the pull rather than try and manipulate it a lot. Yeah, okay, so that's a good way of saying it. Let the weight um, help pull it. Oh, maybe that's why it's, maybe it's not even the grip. Maybe it's the weight of it helping 
pull that makes it like relieve some tension too. I hadn't thought about it in that, that way, but yeah, it, it, it does have some weight to it. So that's like weird as well. Um, but yeah, you're right, Caitlin. I think the weight of it, like relying on that and then just letting it rest in your hand, um, was helpful. But yeah, I, I, I tested it. I like, I super tested it cause my hand really was like, dang, why is it just, you know, I only crocheted for like an hour here. What the heck? I'm never going to get this blanket done. Like, and that's unusual, but it's just, I hadn't crocheted in a while. So it was like, you know, a funny motion for my hand again, like fatigue and all that. But I'm like, oh, I can't have this fatigue. So I had seen those online and gave them a try. And uh, I was able to like go from like 20 minutes to an hour of crocheting before like getting like that pinch feel like through, through the hand. I was able to go like, you know, six hours or so after, after figuring out the hand a little bit. So that was, that was nice. But yeah, I haven't, I've, I'm working on those floss doilies right now. I haven't used it for that yet because I, I want to cut into this one first. Because I'm using a different size needle for those. Anywho, I have been digging into the, the different crafts lately. Maybe it's just because we're doing so much embroidery here in the evenings that I'm like, ooh, I need like other things to do. Or I, I did that crocheted blanket for a baby gift and now I'm like, like wanting to crochet everything again. I like doing those um, for those crocheted, like I like making crocheted baby blankets um, but I like doing that like chevron, yeah, like a zigzag chevron look. And I hadn't done one of those in a while, but I love those for crocheted blankets. And I'm like, ooh, a baby, I can make a crocheted blankie. But yeah, I hadn't done that, hadn't crocheted in, in ages. And now I got like a bunch of crochet projects just hanging out here again. Got the bug again, and I also started knitting um, some more dishcloths this weekend, or yesterday, and I, <laughs> you might have seen the video that I posted today, but I'm like, ooh, first of all, we needed more more dishcloths, um, so so there's a need right now, I've been kind of waiting for that, I have like a, I have a cone of this cotton thread, uh, but I'm like, oh, this is the perfect, the perfect project for me to attempt to learn how to knit without looking at my work. I have a friend who can knit like baby hats and, and winter hats, like without looking at it. Like she can have full, she can read her book, like a physical actual book with words and knit at the same time. And I'm like, dang, that's some magic right there. <laughs> so that ever since she told me that I'm like oh my god I gotta figure out this knitting without looking <laughs> so I gave that an attempt which was fine I'm like no matter what I'm just not not gonna look at these stitches even if I like skip them or whatever who cares I'm just making this like square washcloth I can always start over or whatever I do have a couple skip stitches in it but it's all holding together still but what I noticed was funny when I was actually knitting it I'm like my attempt at not looking at it just I was so focused on my like eyes not looking down that like my eyes were just like wide open and like surprised the whole time like huge wide eyes like because I'm trying to just control <laughs> control my eyes and I'm like this is crazy I'm this is like so silly what I'm doing now but I could I kept checking I kept like noticing that oh my god I'm like my eyes are so wide what am I doing just chill and try the knitting so anyway my takeaway is that I need a lot more practice oh I did not make the baby bag yet Robin I actually started so I'm making I'm going to attempt to make a I have this old baby quilt it's like all nearby because I'm in the middle of making all this stuff and I I don't know it didn't turn out quite how I wanted it uh, so I think I'm gonna, I was gonna cut it up and turn it into like a giant tote bag that I can put like all the other gifts and that sort of stuff in. I got the bias tape made this weekend. So I did make a whole pile of this from a fat quarter and I'm gonna use this to like enclose the edges 
so I suppose that counts as part of the process, but I did not get um, that nearly as far as I was hoping, which is a bummer. But I was going to work on it today, but I was just tired today and was doing actual work. <laughs> Uh, but I do need to get it done this week because the baby shower is on Saturday, so it's going to happen. <laughs> so that might be tomorrow's project. Um, we'll see how far, how far I get on it. All right, this tree's leaves are done. Okay, this guy has the same colored leaves, so... Um, oh gosh, it's already 9.30. So I, I think I'll weave in the ends as if to get started. Um, so I don't have the loop on the end of this anymore, so I have to either do that away not thing, oops, the away not thing that I was doing earlier, but I only do that when I don't have any stitches to weave in the backs of, but in this case, I can just weave in the backs of these stitches that already exist. I go back and forth three times, and again that third time kind of locks in the thread from coming out, and here's the third. And then I think tomorrow we will pop back in here. Let's get the, I'm going to get my needle minder. I should just, I should have had this on already, but there's the needle minder. It's just a little magnet and there, that'll hold my needle, but I'm, I'm all ready. So I'm, I'm woven in. Now I can just start the, start this up right away um, tomorrow with my leftover thread. Let's see. I'd like to finish these trees tomorrow. So that means we have some French knots to do. We have um, uh, red red ones for this tree and, and green ones, light green ones for, for this tree. So this is like, let's call this an apple tree. And let's see, maybe a pear tree. Yeah. Even though it's still just circles. Let's call the pear tree and an apple tree. That sounds yummy. Um, so I might do those and I actually might just do this little birdhouse while we're at it. Well, so then we've gotten like everything back here. I'm just thinking we could actually stitch that fence right away. Just like instead of doing all, all the four fences all at once, we could do the thing that's furthest back first. Or like we could just do the, like the one and then stop and then, you know, do this one after we've stitched the garden kind of like that idea. We could do this part right here too. Yeah. Okay. I like that idea. So tomorrow let's try and get, again, just, I'm sort of planning it out. <laughs> we might totally change our mind, but, um, all right, we'll finish the leaves. We will get the apples and the pears in there and his little birdhouse. And then we will stitch this back fence area. And then I think this little back, this furthest back guy here. And then I'd really love to like start this whole section here. I just think that's so cute. So, all right, you guys, I think that's where we'll stop it for the night. All right, so uh, again, I'll be back here at 8.30 p.m. Central Time tomorrow. Uh, for about an hour. I'm here every night that time and we'll just continue on this. We got our little baby tree started here. I think it's it's a nice little start. <laughs> Again, I've been uh, yammering a bit during uh, during this live, which, you know, is like every live. So casually getting, getting this piece done, but we'll be working on this at least for this week and I suspect a couple days of next week as well. Um, so yeah, so you guys, thanks again. Uh, I will leave that special open again for another 10 minutes or so. So order $20 or more from the shop, um, you know, from here for another 10 minutes or so. And I will throw in a free mystery gift. So thanks again, everyone. Have a lovely evening. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.